This video is about horizontal projectiles. And horizontal projectiles, usually how we represent this is uh, an, an object being thrown perfectly horizontal at, at zero angle uh, off a cliff. It's the easiest way to kind of get it right and see it visually. So what we're going to talk about is some object, in this case probably a cannonball, just being launched out of a cannon off a cliff. And we're going to do it off a cliff that has happened to be 42 meters high, and what we're going to try to determine is how far it goes horizontally. And this ball is going to come off at 100 meters per second. Now, um, the way we define a projectile is a projectile uh, acts as an, it's an object that's launched basically perfectly horizontal or up into the air where the only thing that is affecting it is gravity. So a projectile is an object that moves under the influence of just gravity only. It's the only thing that causes the object to accelerate. And since gravity always acts towards the center of the earth, it only affects things in the vertical axis, so in the y direction, its height. Um, it does not affect things in the horizontal direction at all. Horizontal is not affected by gravity. Everything will continue to go in its place. And while we're doing these projectiles, what we're going to do is we're going to ignore wind resistance. Uh, we know that it affects it. We can talk about how it accounts for it and things like that, but we're going to ignore it and calculate as if it's not there. So right now we're going to take a look at the cannon from the front view, and then we're also going to take a look at the cannon from the top view. And it'll help us try to understand these things. So if you were to view the cannon from the front view, somebody shooting it towards you, you would only see the object falling. I mean, the cannonball might get bigger because it's getting closer to you, but you wouldn't see it in projectile motion. You would just see it come off the cliff and begin to fall. And so because of that, the velocity in the y direction is 0 meters per second, and we can see gravity pulling it down at 9.8 meters per second squared. And in this case, we know the, the cliff was 42 meters high. I don't know why I put meters per second on that. put meters on it there we go and then from the top view you would only see the ball traveling in a straight line and the object would travel at a constant velocity. Whatever it shot out with would travel at 100, like it's shooting off the cliff at 100 meters per second. It will continue at 100 meters per second. So it's going to move at a constant rate at 100 meters per second. Horizontally is not affected by gravity. So when it hits the ground, it bounces. The only thing that affects the horizontal thing, horizontal velocity, is the ground when it hits. And um, we won't account for that here. Uh, so the acceleration happens to be zero because gravity is not affecting it in the horizontal direction. And velocity is 100 meters per second, and it's going to be constant. And we're going to be looking for how far it goes in the x direction. And the way we're going to start solving this is we're going to start with uh, y direction um, variables. And the reason we're going to start in the y direction variables is you can see that we have three givens. And we have one unknown that we need to look for. The most important thing about solving projectiles is having the time of flight. So before you move forward, the first thing you have to do is find time. That's number one. So if you look at both the y direction stuff, so the front view, which is y direction, and the top view, which is x direction, we have more givens in the y direction, which will allow us to solve for time. And having said that, we're going to start with the equation where the change in y equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. And we recognize that the initial velocity is zero meters per second, so we can automatically cancel out that first term and rewrite our equation that the change in y equals one half a t squared. And the first thing we can do now is we gotta we gotta make a list of what's going on uh, with time. So uh, time is being multiplied by one half and it's being multiplied by acceleration. And if that's the case, what we have to do is we have to get rid of that fraction, which is 1 half. And how we do that is we multiply by 2. And we can cancel out that fraction and then rewrite our equation that 2 change in y equals at squared. 
And then at that point, we recognize that it's being multiplied by a. In order to get rid of the a, we divide by it. And that'll cancel it over here on the right side. And we have 2 change in y over a will equal t squared. Then the way to get rid of the, t, the square on the t is to square root it. And those cancel each other out. So now we rewrite our equation where t equals the square root of 2 change in y over a. And that's our equation that we get to deal with. It's very nice. It's very smooth. It's really not that difficult. And I recognize that I'm using 9.8, and we always use 10, but uh, I'm just showing you how it would work in 9.8. Uh, we will still use 10 in class, so don't worry about it. But here we go. We're going to plug in our numbers, so 2 times 42, all divided by 9.8, and we'll take the square root of that, and that comes out to 2.9 seconds. So we'll take that time, and we'll use it in the x direction to help us solve for how far things travel. And we're going to use the the same equation, it works out very nicely, that change in x equals v naught t plus one half at squared. And since acceleration equals zero, we can cancel that term, and it makes it very simple that the change in x equals v naught t. Uh, we also could use the equation of change in x, or no, change in velocity equals, let me just start over here, because that's ugly. Change velocity equals the change in displacement. Having a hard time. Over time. And if we reorganize that equation, for x, we would have to multiply both sides by time. Time cancels. And we could rewrite our equation that change in x is going to equal velocity times time which these are very, very similar equations. And so what this equation, the original equation that we wrote over here, that the change in velocity equals the change in x over time, is a constant velocity equation. We only get to use this equation for constant velocity. And you've learned this equation already, but we only get to use this equation for constant velocity. So having said all that, it's constant velocity equation. Things in the x direction are traveling at a constant velocity because that's what you see from the top view, and that's how we're going to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all that real quick just to give myself the correct amount of room. Get it all cleaned up. So if we were to plug things into our equation over there in the red, change in x equals v naught times t. Our velocity is 100 meters per second coming out of the cannon, and since it's going to stay constant, it's going to be 100. And so we'll just start that now. Plug it in as 100. And then our time is 2.9 seconds. And so the distance that the cannonball travels is 290 meters. So time of flight is the same in both x and y directions. And we can use them uh, whichever way we can find time. We either use the x stuff or the y stuff to find time. It's more common to use the y direction variables. But the time of flight is the same in both the x and y directions. So you will use whichever time you find and however you find it to solve for whatever you're looking for. They could ask for maximum height, uh, which is pretty easy because it's coming off a cliff. Uh, they could ask for um, several things, really. Uh, especially when we start getting into projectiles at an angle. So be sure you use the time of flight uh, for both directions. And that is the conclusion of our video.